so do we need any more clarification on this no this is absolutely clear to everybody right okay so what you need is so if you want this you want an instrument for the supply curve look for a variable exodus variable in the demand curve which is not included in the supply curve right so if you have two endogenous variables in the supply curve i require at least two such excluded variables in the demand curve which are not there in the supply curve right and therefore i must look for the number of what i'll have to really do is i look for variables which are exogenous variables which are excluded from the supply curve in order to identify the supply curve and the number of such excluded variables must be at least as much as the number of endogenous variables which i have in which case i see that the demand system system is exactly identified if the number is exactly equal if the number of such excluded variables is greater right for example here i say income and f plus say g taste plus e to t then i have in principle two instruments to identify the supply curve so the supply curve will be over identified in this case right whereas if i have neither of these two then the supply curve is under identified okay so let's do one thing suppose you are trying to build a model to understand the labor the, the supply of labor for unorganized sector workers in mumbai so you so you are essentially trying to find out how much do people work what are the factors that determine how many hours of work that people put in right so can you can you then do the following <laughs> theory tells you theory tells you that obviously the supply of labor depends upon the wage rate right but we know that as wage rate increases the supply of labor increases up to a point but the wage rate gets too high the supply of labor actually goes down because of the backward bending supply because we know that leisure is a normal good right so as you become richer and richer and richer as wages go up there are two effects one is there is an income effect and there is a substitution effect because there is a substitution effect you work more you consume less leisure because the wage rate is the cost of leisure right in so so basically as wage goes up the cost of leisure goes up so you consume less leisure but as the wage rate goes up you become richer and because as you become richer and because leisure is a normal good you consume more leisure right so suppose i start with a specification which say that supply of labor of the ith individual <coughs> is alpha plus beta the wage rate faced by the ith individual plus gamma w i square right which is the square so this why why do i include a square because then you'll be able to see yeah so if beta is positive and gamma is a small negative number then for low levels of w this derivative will be positive so the supply curve will be going up but as the wage rate increases beyond the point this quantity will start becoming negative so the slope of the supply curve will go down so you will get a backward bending supply curve so you have to test for a backward bending supply curve suppose you have this specification okay si is alpha plus beta wi plus gamma wi square plus ei right do you think you will be identifying the supply curve correctly Do you think you'll be identifying the supply curve correctly? Only with, Only with the help of wages. Will you be identifying the supply curve correctly? No, because what you really have is the following system. What you really have is the supply curve of labor is alpha plus beta w i. the demand curve for labor right 
right? Because the demand curve for labor also depends upon wages, right? And what you observe is, so the situation is exactly like the quantity supplied, quantity demanded model that I've got. So if you want to find, if you want to find the supply curve, okay, you must then be able to, you must then be able to identify the supply curve correctly if you're using a two-stage least squares mod. How will you identify the supply curve correctly? You will find an instrument for wages. So where will you find an instrument for wages? Suppose the demand curve depends upon gamma wi plus say, plus say, uh, plus say, plus say omega, okay? This is omega, okay? And this is w. Huh? Um, uh, this omega, say international business conditions, right? So suppose you're looking at some people who manufacture, the, they are trying to work and look at laborers who are actually manufacturing, which who are working in the organized sector to manufacture something in a small scale industry, which is, which is exported, right? So the international business conditions are an exogenous variable for the demand here. They determine the demand, the demand doesn't determine what the business conditions are. So even exogenous variable here, which can then work as an instrument here, right? So in order to to, to defer, to, to to in order to identify the supply curve, what you have to do is you have to find one such exogenous variable in the demand equation, which you will have to regress on W i, use W hat i as an explanatory variable in this model, calculate alpha hat and beta hat and get the correct p values by adjusting for the, that the computer will do. If you ask it to, ask the computer that I want to do an instrumental variable estimator, it will ask you which is your variable that you are worried about, W i. What is the instrument? This is the instrument, right? And then the computer will correctly calculate the t values, etc. for you, right? So the key point that I want to remember is you can't simply regress this and get the, uh, the, the supply curve. Sure? Is this correct? Everybody gets this? Right? Any doubts about this? But this is a very important point that you must always remember. Because very often, we just put data on a dependent variable and independent variable in the computer and then we think that we are getting the demand curve or the supply curve, right? But that might not really be true. What you get could be of neither of the demand curves or the supply curves. Okay, this is a larger problem of endogeneity. So the instrumental, so the point is, instrumental variables can in general be used if you have an omitted variable bias or errors in variables or simultaneity biases. If you have errors in variables or, or or you know, or an omitted variable bias, then you have no guidance from where you will get an instrument. But in a simultaneous equation system, there is a way in which you can look for instruments. By looking for variables which are, by looking for variable, exogenous variables which are included in the other equation, but which are excluded from the equation that you want to identify, those can be used as instruments. Those can be used as instruments, and therefore, this is also called an instrumental variable or a two-stage least squares. Uh, estimator. Is this okay? Right, please remember this point. This point is very valid, very vital in applied econometric work. Okay? Sure? Right? Okay. So we'll stop today now because uh, Dr. Kote will take a class with you at 1 o'clock. And I want you also to have some time to eat something, right? Okay, and because I think you have got this idea. And this is an important idea. I don't want to add any other clutter to this, right? So we'll stop right now. Thank you. <laughs>